All right, it looks like we are ready to get started with Odin Sphere Life Thrace here, Velvet uh, Velvet Route by Demarine. So Demarine and Syl, would you like to take it away? Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Hi. Cat. No, we're not we're not petting the cat yet. We're at the start of the run, not the can, finish. Can, can we pet the cat? Can we pet the cat? Please? Not right now. Like I have a run to do. But oh. pet the cat first okay. and then for good luck? No, no, no. We okay. have to pet the cat after the run. Okay. We pet the cat after the run. We maintain we have to maintain tradition. Otherwise runs go bad. Runs gonna go bad anyway. I'm not derusted enough. But hey, that's alright. That's alright. I I get plenty of DRS PBs. It's fine. We're good. I'm feeling all right. Hi, everybody. It's Demarine. I'm back for my last run of the marathon. Did you hear uh, Demarine promising a PB right there? Because I sure no, did. No, no, no. I'm not promising anything. No, no take back, <laughs> Steve. You're doing a PB. Thanks, Demi. Oh, God. No, I'm not going to die to airship. I'm going to die to airship. I'm not going to die to airship. Where are we? What am I doing? Uh, velvet. Velvet. Oh, Key. Right. Chain scythes. Chain, chain scythes and, and running at enemies face first because that's what we do. Um, cool. And lots of lots of technical juggles and a lot of fun. Yeah, lots of interesting movement on her too. Hey, there's music too. Weird that. There's an ominous book titled Fate. However, we will be skipping literally all of the plot. Basically, the plot is Velvet is also a princess because all three of the women in this game are princesses because, you know, reasons... Um, Velvet has lost her entire kingdom to an explosion, um, which is explained in the other four storylines and in the ending, but not really as much during Velvet's storyline, because we're going to skip that. Um, I guess I should get going, though, right? Is it about that time? Rumor it's has about it. about that time. I think uh, it is about that time. Can someone count me in, please? All right, well, I'm gonna, I'll am gonna. i go ahead and give a five count if that, if that works to everybody. Go and ahead. We'll go ahead and get started with the run in five... Four, three, two, one, and begin. All right, I'm running my own timer on the background because I like having my timer, but we're going to skip some plot here. Um, and we're going to skip a tutorial because the tutorial is real short for Velvet because she's the last character. And by the time you've gotten here, you've seen all the tutorials. You know what you're doing. So we're going to dash backwards three times. And as soon as we see that line show up on the screen, we're going to pause to skip it. And we're going to kill teddy bears. The reason that we backdash three times is to put ourselves right here, basically. So a lot of what I'll be doing throughout the run is setting up my exits. Basically, I want to be on top of... I want to be just to the left of the next exit I want to take at all times. Um, yeah, that means the treasure chest will spawn right on top of the exit. And so we can grab the treasure chest like as we're leaving. Yeah. Cool. We're going to the land of the dead. I don't remember why. There's there's a lot of plot. The plot's fantastic in this game. I just I do not have the energy to the energy to explain it or the memory to go through it all. Yeah. Well, while uh, while she is in the bit middle of completing these stages and skipping all the plot, we do have one donation that came in. It was fifty six dollar donation from Zello. Who says one last donation for me before I head to uh, head to bed? Here's fifty six dollars for the fifty six in NT, uh, the, the last run. Since I didn't get any fun death related shenanigans, thank you to all the staff, volunteers, runners, and commentators putting together this wonderful marathon for such a fantastic cause. Thank you very much for your donation. Uh, looks like that's the only one that's uh, that's come in. So. Uh, and so we're seeing some of the first speed tech that she's using here. Um, there's some animation canceling that she's using there at the um, when she kills enemies, where she kind of slide dashes up. Um, well, two things are actually going on there. First of all, there's the animation cancel to get out of the the attack animation once the as soon as the enemy's dead to get moving and the other one is that slide dash is actually faster than running and faster than pretty much any other movement that velvet has um yeah it is 
literally the fastest thing I could do to get from point A to point B by far. So like it's kind of a, a, a dodge immediately into a jump. And Velvet really books it. She actually has some like Velvet doesn't have a glide the way the other a lot of the other characters have. She instead kind of like grappling hooks her chain off of the top of the screen, whatever's up there. Regardless of whether there actually is anything up there. This boss is a little obnoxious because it will try to teleport away at certain points. However, um, because it's chapter one, we're just kind of crushing it in damage. This is pretty much the only time in the run that we won't be massively underleveled. Because this is an RPG speedrun. And we're pretty much fighting the minimum number of battles. Unless I was playing Cornelius and I would do one more fight than I'm supposed to. Oh yeah, we ended up routing one of those in, didn't we? Yeah, it was really weird. It went faster with the extra fight in it. I was also playing it like the absolute height of my practice and powers, <laughs> which I am not doing right now as it's hard to tell that I'm not, but I can tell. Yeah, the movement in this game is really precise and tight. Like there's there's just little places that I think Demi might be complaining at herself for like not having absolute perfect movement, losing like fractions of a second here and there. Yeah, or absolutely uh, perfect enemy grouping is also real important, and I don't always have that either. We get a prophecy there. We're not really gonna pay much attention to it. Oh, that's a healing potion. That sucks. Um, yeah, that's one. That's the one point of RNG that we really get here is that um, what kind of potions get dropped when we are in the middle of fights? Uh, because we want damage potions. Yep, healing is really strictly almost not necessary except for one spot in the run, maybe. But the nice thing is Odette gave us a, another cycle of just walking backwards, which she could do sometimes. Um, so instead of actually trying to, like, kill me, she just runs away from me. If I had a way to manipulate that, that'd be fantastic, but I don't, so... Yeah, she does always teleport away at the end of each one of these health bars. Uh, bosses have six health bars. That's better. We use two shine potions, one to finish the second to last health bar, and one to stun Odette in her last health bar. They do good damage, and they lock her out of, well, killing me, which is great. So we're going to finish her off real fast here. It's a good fight. And those shine potions are, like, especially effective on, on undead, so they're not going to be nearly as useful in the other chapters as they are in right the <laughs> land of the dead. Because yep. dead things. So we're going to get our first look at the upgrade tree. The whole idea is you can open your menu anytime to get in here, but we do all of our menuing when the game lets us, basically, because every time you get a new skill, the menu opens. We don't actually want to go into the menu on our own. That's a waste of time. Um, so we're going to level things up uh, when the game basically pops the menu open for us and we're required to be in here anyway. I actually got the timing on that jump. That's weird. That saves like that saves like a quarter of a second. <laughs> Sometimes you get stuck in the door if you try that. <laughs> cool. Now we gotta go punch the fairies in the face because they're they're bad. We don't like we don't like anybody. Velvet is basically there's two factions having a war: the uh, the Asir, the Valkyries, and the uh, the fairies from Ringford. Um. Velvet is from the Kingdom of Valentine and hates them both. Well, she's trying to, like, 
stop Save the, the war. war over well she's trying to stop the war that is like over the thing that destroyed her kingdom so like yes. she, has, she has strong feelings about that really she's got some feelings about that yeah all of her people are, are dead or turned into bunnies so Oh, that was bad. What, the bit at the end of the screen there, or...? I just sort of... I sort of just dodged and didn't start swinging again, so I just sort of fell to the ground. <laughs> so I'm delaying some swings here to group enemies up. Because what happens is that when I hit this, the final part of my combo, it does knock enemies away from me. So I want to be a little careful, so you'll see me do this, 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 and then kill them. So that they... So that they die on the last hit of the attack. Um, this is a timing thing to save myself a hair bit of time in, in non-boss combat. But we are going to do our first teleport setup here. So we're going to go through this this gate. We're going to teleport back to start. Fall back down. And that gave us a checkpoint that we can teleport back to at any point. We're going to do... Uh, now that we're small, we need to be small to go through this door. And now we're gonna push triangle and we make ourselves not small. We're gonna fight our first mini boss of this area. I don't have any fire potions. I wanted to register that, thank you. Um, but we're gonna register this to up circle so that we can hit it later, but we want her burning. It does a little bit of extra damage. Yeah. Um, and there's kind of two resources here. There's the rapidly regenerating POW meter that we don't Real, they don't. We have dancing chains to use that right now, but it's not really our favorite skill to use. It's not that much more DPS or even much more DPS at all compared to our regular basic attack combos. Uh, and then there's the boson power, which is that 10 out of 23 meter just below our hit points. I can use and the I can use the dancing chain for some invulnerability at points, right. like right now. So it gives me armor, which lets me break through attacks. Yep, yeah, that's pretty much why you're not using it as frequently as possible. Is that it's not actually a damage increase, but the the defensive capability of being in an animation is uh, very useful. Yeah, basically, if you've ever played a fighting game, it gives you what's called the super armor state, um, which means that you can't be knocked out of what you're doing. Which is actually really important. So we're going to go up so, here. We're not supposed to be able to get up here yet, but we're going to go up here. Yeah, I'm using some kind of fancy uses of the jumping system. Ooh, there's a tourney. Ooh, there's, a, there's a tourney. I don't need it for this route, though. No. Oh. <laughs> if it were a, a, a either a Cubs Bane or a or a uh, Popner Easter, I'd be a little more excited. Uh, but says... we're going to get Spiral Drive, which you're going to see for the next 50 minutes or so. Yeah, Spiral Drive is going to be our power-consuming move that is going to be our bread-and-butter um, ability for... Oh, no. Oh, wait, no. We're, we're trying to go down, not up. Yep. But yeah, we're going to jump up here. Again, not supposed to really be able to get up here either. Um, Spiral Drive, we're going to put that to forward circle, and we are going to spam it. Spiral Drive breaks enemy guard, it does a lot of damage, it increases our hit counter a lot, which will matter later. Um, it does everything. It does everything I could ever want and more. Yep, and this is why Velvet is one of the fastest characters. Well, that and I also skip, like, every fight that I can skip. Um, yeah, Velvet is... Though it's the second combat lightest character in the game. Mercedes I do the least fights on. Because I literally get to damage boost and skip out on two bosses too, which is really nice. But this route is very, very short, all things yeah. considered. And her just often like offensive power is pretty much through the roof. Well, when you know how to play her, if you're not like speedrunning, her offensive capabilities are a little weird. Oh, I fell short there, that's bad. Um they're they're a little weird and a little wonky at first, and then you just like, oh, I just final drive everything in the speedrun because you know, she's got all these cool abilities, and I don't use any of them. 
like all of her abilities are based around like setting her enemies on fire and doing more damage to enemies who are burning and it's just like what are you doing? That's fire for driving. <laughs> I do have a donation, if you have a one. Go ahead. Uh, we got a, a $10 donation from Infinius, who asks a question that uh, I, I too, am, am interested in knowing the answer to. Uh, honest question, what does Life 3 Seer mean? No idea. Couldn't tell you. I, I, I've got nothing. I, I I also know nothing. I'm just uh I I was curious. <laughs> Alright, so we're gonna have one of our character battles here. We're fighting Mercedes. Um She's a little tricky because she doesn't have a knocked to the ground state. She can break out of combos pretty easily sometimes and is hard to juggle. Um, and this being kind of a fighting game, uh, juggling is real good, but we're gonna... Oh, missed that last little hit in the combo. That was intentional. Oh, okay. Oh, missed that pickup, though. The pickup is really technical because... Because she's there. small and she has a weird hitbox at points. So a lot of the time I don't try to juggle Mercedes and just kill her on the ground. We're gonna need a good, real good air juggle there though, which I'm happy about. And a Volcano Potion. Winners all the way around today. It's a tough fight. Like, if you catch an extra, you can sometimes pop her up and get an extra free juggle out of it. And then you can just kill her real easy. Or you do what I just did there and drop it twice and then you're just real sad. Cool. But we get Assault Hive, now we get a multiplier to our damage based upon uh, based upon the amount of hits we have in the hit counter. Yep. So our chain gauge is actually meaningful now. And uh, other than... it's also It is also used for a grade. Also, uh, let's get that bread. Let's get that bread, gamers. I think it's real important that in every route, we've routed and getting that bread because we need levels. You gain experience much more efficiently by eating food rather than fighting things. Um, so the whole point of how I route this route is to get as much food as possible when I can and eat it in in bunches, basically. Um, so we got that bread. This will make us hit a lot harder. Uh, getting like five levels there is super useful. Yeah, it keeps us from slipping too far behind in the, uh, the level scaling, in fact. You know, once again, we're we're not lower level than the enemies for now. By the end of this chapter, we will be again, and probably will never be higher level than the enemies again. Right now, we're tapping into the middle of the uh, the fairy versus uh, Valkyrie war, and because we want to shut down the thing that they're fighting over, they won't be mad about it. About they this. will not be mad about it. They they don't get salty or anything. No. They definitely get salty. <laughs> oh yeah, they're real salty. Um They were del delaying the dash there because we want to get that let that last fa fairy on the screen so that we can remove her from combat at the same time we remove everybody else from combat. Yep, a lot of these fights go in waves, so like the next one doesn't spawn until you've defeated the previous one. So even if it's not the last enemy that's going to pop up, it still is important to like kill enemies as soon as they pop up. Alright, and we got a Unicorn Paladin fight. That's a real hard pick up there off of that. No surprise I didn't get it. Oh, that's bad. Getting... Every time that the health bar finishes if you time it right you will get a juggle every time missing it is real bad real good though is catching a second enemy in your juggle because you can see my chain counter going up by two come on really 
instead of one. Which is twice as good. This is this is what de-rusting does for me, is reminds me how to hit all my juggles, and I'm not hitting them right now. Yeah, they are imp they are quite precise. Oh, that would have been a critical hit too, and we didn't hit it. Yeah, I missed time to swing. But yeah, we're going to just hop over some enemies here and go to the left. And now we're going to fight dwarves, who are part of the Valkyrie army. What if you're gluten intolerant? Well, there is plenty of lovingly rendered gluten-free food in this game. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like oh, all of them. While we are fighting uh, the Dwarf Army, uh, just as a reminder, there are a couple of donation incentives for the next uh, a couple of upcoming runs. We are at $116 out of $200 uh, for Magic Boy Show Off the Soft Lock. And we are at $63 out of $250 for Beyond Shadowgate uh, in order to show off the death scene and the turtle race. So both of those runs are coming up uh, imminently after Odin Spear. So uh, if you would like to see either or both of those, please go ahead and get your donations in. They would be greatly appreciated. Remember, all donations do go directly to support Take This. So, uh, this Valkyrie is kind of giving you the business here. Valkyrie leaders are really buff and have a lot of health. They're fairly mobile. They're aggressive. And in being aggressive, they can also get out of the way of things somewhat frequently because they are quick. <laughs> yeah. Like that first one, I just isolated and juggled it because I was really tired of... Because this, this wave is three Valkyrie leaders, and I got real tired of dealing with three Valkyrie, Valkyrie leaders at the same time. So that was a little slow, but safer. Yeah. Dying is not a huge penalty. It just takes you back to the start of the room, but you lose all the time you put into it, which is really annoying. And you can see the game actually, like, even helpfully has a little timer for each individual battle at the end of it. So you can kind of judge how you did on a particular one. We got the good RNG here. We get to bounce those hammers back to break his shields. He doesn't take damage until those shields are broken. So yeah, um, be between the flame pillar, between the flame pillar and bouncing back the two hammers, I basically got an instant four break, which is great. Fire spirits, we need those later. So, am I correct in saying that this is a uh, giant dwarf? <laughs> And, so this uh, is Brigan. He's like the head of the. He's the head of the dwarf section of the Isir army. He's also a giant jerk, and in the actual plot line, you fight him like with every character. It feels like um, Gwendolyn actually kills him. Like just like the the head of the Valkyrie army literally kills him in the plot line. I feel like this boss is just a giant oxymoron. <sighs> <laughs> I missed that. I'm having a hard time hearing Rhea, but that's because my game is loud enough so I can hear everything uh, I need it, to hear. She, she was calling him a uh, giant oxymoron. Unfortunately, these uh, these Valkyries do repair the shields in the middle of the fight. Yeah, that was really bad, actually. It's if, not something you want to have happen. It makes no. bosses die slower. I usually save. I usually save a potion for that to just throw at them and get them out of my way. But I didn't that time, and like I just they spawned at a bad time. Like usually they'll spawn later if I time it right. Didn't happen. But we're gonna get a bunch of upgrades now because we got a bunch of levels from eating all that bread. <laughs> you get one upgrade point per level, and you get phosons from killing enemies. So we don't have enough for that, but we do have enough for sharp edge. Which is, if enemies are a little far, if enemies are at the edge of your attack range, they take an additional twenty percent damage, um, and then we take, and then we take backstab, which means if we can get behind things, we will deal another twenty percent damage as well. All your multipliers add together, so 
this is sort of the the basis of dealing damage through the the mid game here, chapter four, chapter five. Bleed in time off my PB, but that's fine. This is a tougher out. Hey, that's the same thing. That just means you're gonna have to work a lot harder for this PB you promised us, Demi. I did not promise a PB. I never promised a PB. Don't believe her lies. She definitely promised wow. a PB chat. Donate Don't for uh, Demi's upcoming uh, PB. Don't listen to Ondor's lies. Wait, wrong speedrun. We did that already this marathon. <laughs> I get that reference now. I got that far in 12. All right, we're going left here. <laughs> we're jumping over that Griffin. As much as we want to fight Griffins and their, uh, their lovingly rendered everything, we're going to just skip that and fight uh, Bugbear instead. Ow. Well, that's embarrassing. I usually don't get punched by this guy. Bugbear, not normally a fight I practice because he's just a big old wall of hit points. The toxin potions are nice. Um, getting hit by the ice things, especially if we get hit by more than one of them, not as nice. Uh, yeah, because they don't freeze you. Frozen solid, which is really bad, like that. Well, then you mash out of it, but. You can mash out of it, but it still interrupts you. It's still really bad. game's trying to tell you that you're low health. I don't think you care. Nah, you get a little bit of healing for foes on your grab. Yeah, we're grabbing we're grabbing the grape seeds that pop out there because we're going to need money later and grape seeds sell for good money. I was completely on the wrong side of the arena, but there's not a lot we can do about that. Nope, not that way. Nope, not that way either, Jen. Come on, you remember how to play this game, right? I mean, I'll be honest, I don't remember where to go half the time in this game, even when I'm looking at the map, so. Do I have a Blaze Potion, is the question of the day. I do not. We're going to substitute this. So now I'm concerned about my life total a little bit, not going to lie. Um... Part of what this boss does, and it's really subtle, is applies... Applies wind pressure to you. I'm gonna do this for safety. This is real bad. <laughs> I used up the extra. I used up my my extra flame pillar that I usually use on this fight. On the end of Bugbear to speed it up a little bit. Uh, there we go. Now you're speaking my language, game. Wrong potion. That's fine. We don't need that anyway. We need to get that on the on the floor on the floor. This this boss is not super mobile a lot of the time if he's taking a lot of damage. So. The Blaze Potion will do a lot of work, because most of his moves are like this, where he stands still and tries to punch you, or stands still and summons elementals, or stands still and you kind of get the get the stand still and stomps. And that Blaze Potion creates a long duration fire pillar on the ground. Yep. As long as the enemies are moving out of it, it's going to keep hurting. Very convenient for a boss like this. I have a feeling that since we're in the ice stage, uh, enemies might be a little bit more vulnerable to fire than the average bear. That is also true. Sounds like we're fighting right, bears. Don't tell Sparko. All right, well that was awful, but like, again, hey, that hey, fight... we lived with 20 health. We we survived. Oh, so that, we that healing happy. potion was uh, worth it. The healing potion was strictly necessary, but we're alive and we're well, and we didn't lose any progress in that fight. I'm just getting hit by everything I don't normally get hit by. This is amazing. The Griffins have a ba a very, very high speed back kick that they can hit you with. But, like, they are almost always too stunned to use it.
perfect. That crit's actually gonna stick and get a fairly quick kill on that last bird. Well, uh, as we know, birds are jerks. Birds are indeed jerks. So, fourth boss is Wagner, the dragon. Another big sack of hit points, but I'm going to grab those two cheeses for level 15 before I go in, because I want to have a little bit of extra experience. Also lets us heal up. Uh, also lets us heal up. Uh, do I still have a Toxin Potion? I do, I did get one. Wagner's immune to, to burn status, but... Uh, but... But poison status does good work on on him, so we're gonna do that real quick, and we're gonna. Ooh, another toxin potion, nice. Although he's actually significantly more dangerous when he's in the air. Oh. Yeah, on the ground he can just he just sort of stands there and may, may occasionally breathe at you. All of his attacks require that he start going up in the air first. Oh, we're behind him. This is nice. We're getting the backstab damage. Um, so basically, while he's on the ground, he's just sort of st he's sort of he's sort of sunlocked more or less. Velvet can deal with him pretty well in the air with uh, with uh, with the dash, but it's like not optimal. Like this is this is where you want him is right here on the ground, thinking about flying but failing to actually do so. So I have to ask, uh, now that this boss is finished up, can you explain about the chain mechanic and how that works and what that's useful for? Uh, well, for it's useful for a couple different things, but only one of them do we truly care about. Um, basically, it's like a chain from like a fighting game where like you're hitting enemies and not getting hit and not leaving gaps in between hitting enemies. Uh, your chain gauge goes up. Um, because we have the skill Assault High, that also is a passive damage increase based on our chain on what the number is on our chain gauge. Uh, I don't actually know what the math is on that. I don't either. I just know I just know bigger is better, and therefore we just want to make sure we have as long a chain as possible. <laughs> but yeah, we get captured at the end of that fight. Um, by by the Valkyries who are just like we 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 find our way out of course because we're the hero and therefore we can escape. Um, but we're gonna do some fish farming here. Um, hopefully. There are enemies that we fight in the forest who drop fish potentially as a possible drop. And of course, we want as much fish as possible because we will eat. We will eat the raw. We will eat the raw salmon patties here um, for an absolute pile of levels later. But for now, we gotta get some. So is it sushi time? We're hoping it's sushi time. Now These I'm bears hungry. will drop treasure chests. These bears will drop treasure chests, and if they drop the right treasure chests, they will have sushi in them. If not, they'll have grape seeds and I'll be sad. They can also have like materials or a little bit of money, also, which makes me sad. So you folks can run the restream, right? Because I gotta go get some sushi. BRB. No. All right. See you back in a bit. Okay. okay bye. If, uh, <laughs> if everything spontaneously collapses, I will hit. I will panic. I really hope it doesn't. Cool. So we didn't get any fish drops yet. We get one more chance at it, but we also do buy. Uh, we do buy something here to normalize our experience a little bit. Uh, in that we will come down here and buy, we will buy one shrimp. Oh, an apple seed. That we'll see more of those later tonight. We'll see more of those later tonight too. But right now. Okay. 
I am getting hit by like everything right now. Like that's not supposed to happen. The 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 bears can throw their honey pots at you and I, you. I have never seen that attack before. I have. When I'm playing real good, that's when you see it. Oh, there's the habanero. Habanerista. Those are the the spicy peppers that make fire potions. And uh, she was mentioning earlier how useful they were. Yeah, I'm gonna use that to make a second. I have one fire spirit, so I'm just sort of hanging on to for later, and then I'll just make another one. Did I really get nothing? I really got nothing. Wow. This is... Yeah, right, not well, finding any fish drops is really unfortunate. It's really bad, actually. Um, we usually count on getting at least one. Getting zero is super bad. So, someone in chat has pointed out, for those interested, looked up Life Tracer. It's a, it's a, an anglicized version of, a, of, a Nor of an old Norse, uh, which basically means, quote, zest for life and is the name of one of two people who, uh, in Norse mythology, is said to have survived Ragnarok. Ah, oh, okay. Uh, and also that is super neat. That, also points out that this, 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 this game seems oddly appropriate for a Valkyrie marathon. Oh, absolutely. There's a reason that, we, that it's run uh, most of our marathons. <laughs> Hold on a sec. Why is this game appropriate for a Valk's marathon? I don't understand. I'm not even. I mean, I'm not even playing as a Valkyrie right now. See, exactly. There's no tie-in. I refuse to accept your reality. Are, are, we, are, are you rejecting my reality and substituting it uh, by my own, your own Natara Savage? Yes, exactly. Except yours is actually reality, and mine is just mornings are hard. Cool. All right. So, so we, we're gonna mix some yogurt by like putting in some healing potion and food and. Yeah, we need I'm to make not... that yogurt as big as possible, basically, so we can get as much experience multiplier as we can out of that food. Especially since we have a little bit left, or less than we usually do, and we're actually just shy of the level up, but that'll be okay, because like, killing some of the regular enemies that spawn will push us over the edge here. Yeah. For the On this mini-boss. So yeah, we just got the... it. Is this one of those games where it's like... The difference between level like 21 and 22 is absolutely astronomical and you go from like doing like 5 damage all of a sudden doing like 80, 82 damage per hit or something like that. It's not or quite that. Like... It's not that. It's significant, but it's not like that. Like it's a reasonably smooth damage increase for each level. There aren't huge spikes of damage except, well, really when we get Spiral Drive and Assault High. Yeah. But like basically, um, I mean, it's it's enough of a difference maker. Like in my in my world record run of this route right now, I'd be level twenty five, not twenty two. <laughs> That's worth like a good like maybe fifteen, like ten ten percent extra damage or so, something like, like that. It's like two damage a hit, and you think. Two damage hits not a lot, and then you look at my chain gauge it's at three seventeen. It's like, oh. Yeah, keeping that chain gauge going though, like that does increase damage for each number that the chain gauge that. So getting that it all the way up to three hundred forty-two there is, is pretty the nice to thing, see. It is the only thing that matters ultimately when all is said and done. All right. Now it's time to go fight Jerk Dad. One of the revelations of the storyline is that Odin is your dad. Um, basically, your your his illegitimate daughter. Um. No, I mean it's like that you're like an illegitimate daughter from like who's also royalty of another kingdom. So like, Odin, please. Odin, please. <laughs> Also, Odin punches real hard. He does. We did manage to block there. Uh, we don't go out of our way to block too much, but you can often get blocks just from attacking, because the attack button and the guard button are in fact the same thing. But yeah, we're gonna maximize our Odin juggle here because we got him in the air, so we're gonna not yeah, let him drop <laughs> until there's a nice we have crit to. there in the middle of the juggle too. Yeah. There's two crits that happen in the game. There's there's standard crits, which just happen as part of combos. They're hard to see, but there's a little red 
There's a little red circle flash when they happen, and part of getting levels is getting luck stat, which actually does increase the number of crits that you get. And then there's the big crits, which are at the end of combos. You see that that big cinematic flash. Uh, crap, 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 crap. Uh, you know why the game's called Odin Sphere, right? Cause, cause he has a giant sphere weapon. Which, for a small duration, gives him super armor as well, so he does not get into stun state at all while he's holding the orb. And then he absorbs Fozons for healing! God, this is so bad! Yeah, it is I need to get ahead of the orb or I'll die! <laughs> oh gosh! So our boss room is infinitely long. Uh, they're actually circular, so we're just going around. Like, all the battle rooms are circular. They You just kind of go around in a circle. Uh, I see. You can actually see on the bot, if you look at the bottom right of the mini-map, there's like a little mini-map there that shows you, uh... Are they a, uh, beer? Uh... I guess they are. Just, just reading off chat here. I, I didn't. I, I, am not quite wa awake enough to come up with such, such, such amazing puns at, at this at this time. They're more toroidal. Um. But yeah, after Odin, after Odin kicks the carp out of my run there a little bit more, um, we're gonna grab the last thing we grab out of this, which is uh. Oh, fudge. We're going to grab Power Supply. Kind of want the extra experience here because I'm behind on experience, but the Power Supply is really handy for rooms full of enemies because every time you kill an enemy, you get back 20% of your power gauge, which is a lot. <laughs> um, and we're going to... We get some food in this chapter. No, the sphere is a reference to Odin's weapon. It is literally the o it is literally Odin's sphere. Can I can hear the still kids in the background? All right, so uh, now we're in the kingdom of uh... the kingdom is this of Valentine? No, Titania. This is, this is Titania. Yeah. We never go to Valentine. Valentine's completely destroyed. Um, this Valentine is, is that big desert that we were in. Yeah, this is this is uh, this is Cornelius's kingdom. Yeah, we're here to save our bunny boyfriend. We don't know he got turned into a bunny yet. Oh, we, by now we know he's been turned into a bunny. Does Velvet know that yet? Yeah, Velvet definitely knows that. Okay. Cornelius doesn't know that Velvet knows that yet. No, they they meet. They they know. <laughs> That's the one thing I know about the storyline. Everyone knows that Cornelius is a bunny. Including his dad, who wants to kill him. Um. And yet Cornelius still tries to hide it. Maybe I, maybe I thought that they didn't meet until this point. I could be wrong. I'm pretty sure they've met by now. That's okay. We don't. We don't. We. Uh, we. I'm not. I don't think we have time for the plot. But bunny boyfriends. Look, everybody loves bunny boyfriend. Isn't that just the plot there? We don't need any more words. Funny boyfriend, explained! Now, as I understand, I, I, as, I think, as I think you've told, said in a previous marathon, this game originally came out for the PS2, but like the PS2 version was, uh, we'll say, a little too uh, ahead of its time, hardware-wise, and so... Yeah, it was, it was definitely pushing the console a little harder than... The console could be pushed there if you weren't playing it on a PS3 that had backwards compatibility. 
it literally would have like frame rate like severe severe frame rate drops during several fights but by several we mean every like every fight but like some of them they were so severe that like the game's not really playable i know uh that i've seen people that were like unable to complete the game because some of the boss fights were too hard because it drops down to single digit fps yep so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna buy we're finally gonna buy bangles in chapter six but we need to finally. sell some stuff first yeah we don't get them until now i'm busy Thank you. Oh yeah, we need 350 gold, so we sell all of those seeds we've been hoarding, and then now we are powerful. Yeah, those bangles do two things. They make us deal more damage, and they make us take more damage. Wait a minute. Yeah, I mean, it's a speedrun. We deal more damage. Who cares about what the other print is on it? <laughs> as long as it's not you die instantly, right? But yeah, they, each of them individually increases my damage by 16%, increases my damage taken by 12%, but also increases my damage dealt at low at low health by 12% as well. Um, oh, so being, <laughs> taking more damage is almost a good thing. As long, Kinda, as, yeah. as long as you don't die to Dwarven Airship. We don't talk about dying to Dwarven Airship. Well, we do, but... Cool, but we're done with treasure chests. Um, we're done with basically everything at this point. Like, I'm gonna have to do some alchemy and jam out some potions, but otherwise, like, we're just gonna be hauling, hauling tail through the rest of this. Also, for anybody who's on PB watch for me right now, I am currently about four minutes off of PB. Uh, that, that PB is not happening, probably. Listen, you have, according to estimate, 24 minutes left. What's your actual PB? Uh, in game time is like 5650. <laughs> oh, but I don't know how that difference differs from the timer. Mm. I'm at 44 uh, right about, now. It's oh. about one. Yeah, it's about one minute different okay. from the. Uh... Okay, so you got 12 minutes. I have faith in you. I think it's Mario Drive <laughs> 5 here though, which is actually which is actually optimal. It's very rare that I'm at, <laughs> excuse me at 175 there. I'm usually at like 163 or something. So being at 175 there is actually kind of awesome. Um. Now I get, like, now I get optimal foes on luck because, you know, that's how that works. Um, yeah, you're also, like, three levels behind where you normally yeah, I'm, are. Yeah, I'm going to catch up a lot of it, but I'm going to do the, I'm going to do the safety food before, I maybe should have done the safety food before Chapter 6 and just gone to Puka Village and sucked up, but I decided not to. Which is not helping my time in this section either. Like, normally if you get, if you get two fish drops, you can skip, you can skip the last meal. Which is super handy, obviously. I want that, actually. I'm gonna just drop the juggle for that, so I don't forget it. That's my other Fire Spirits potion. Drop the juggle, but didn't drop your chain. And now that we have the another thing in the juggle, so the chain gauge is gonna go even faster. And the game actually lets you, like, keep beating up on a dead enemy that you have caught in your chain. For a while, uh, until basically until you drop the juggle on that on their dead body. Yeah, once they hit the ground, they're dead. Like they're dead, dead. But as long as they're in the air, they're not actually they're not actually quote unquote dead. So as you can see, our chain meter is just to the roof, and we're hitting for over a hundred to hit now on occasion. So would you say you're not dead until you're on the ground and dead? Yeah. Okay, gotcha. That was actually one second off a gold split for that split. See? PB's coming. Yeah, I'm only three minutes-ish behind. I don't know. See? You were four minutes a minute oh. ago, so listen. We're already we're rocking this. So, we're going to craft up the safety food here. We've got this extra yogurt. Um, we'll throw the milk at it. We'll throw this mulberry at it. We'll get to level four. So we'll get a little extra experience here. And we're going to eat these four cacaos. I usually keep these for crafting purposes, but again, my experience is in the trash right now, so we're going to... We're going to fix that. But we're done with this chapter. We're going to fight the boss now. Um, still, so explain the worst boss in the game. Still, so we'll explain the worst boss in the game when they get back. Um, I am still here. Oh, you're still here? I need you to explain wizards. So, wizards. Um, he will teleport, and then he will decide to do something. 
decide whatever he decides to do could be another teleport. When he teleports, he gets iframes. It sucks. He also has pet dragon. Dragons are cool. The dragon is not nearly as rude as the wizard. So I will take every opportunity I have to, to juggle the wizard, to hit the wizard, to beat up the wizard. So this is a huge RNG section because that wizard will just like teleport away from us a lot. Uh, we'll try to use our potions to burn and poison him because he can't run away from those. And if we ever get a juggle on him, there are some pretty cool things that um, Velvet can do with the uh, juggling. Oh, wow. I ended up blocking an attack from the wizard, which when you're blocking, you are not able to, like, move. And you're like, that's not super important. You're like, not super important. Um, so basically, I got inhaled by the dragon and took about a third of my health and damage. Oh, a quarter, actually. Now I've, I've fixed my health a little bit. Why do you teleport away, friend? So even though the wizard has significantly less health than the dragon, the dragon's going to be the one that dies first invariably, unless we get the a really amazing juggle off. Hit it! Come on! It feels like it's actually harder to hit it when it, like, it has to be more precise when it's a crit than when it's not. Is that true? Or is that just like... It's, it's timing, because the delay. Uh-huh. We have a toxin, too. Oh, jeez. One more hit? Sure. Psst, come on! Thank you. My hatred of that fight is, is pretty high. <laughs> Yeah, that, that end bit just kind of really showed off just how obnoxious that teleporting is, because it's like, I am at two hit points, and... No! And I'm gonna, now I'm going to teleport 17 times. Good luck. Yeah. All right. Well, while um, while we're doing that, thank you, Syl, for the $50 donation. Uh, and you wrote, uh, our donation really spiraled out of control last night. We're closing in on over 9,000. Let's drive that total up. Love you, Demi. Aww. And that went towards uh, naming Riddy as Sil for Final Fantasy IV. Cool, since we're way off PB pace, who wants to see some lovingly rendered food? Me! Cool. We're actually going to let this rock. I I never let this rock, by the way. We'll, fast, we'll, we'll fast forward it. I was going to say, lovingly rendered food is an acceptable alternative to PBs. Yep. Like, it even animates velvet blowing on the food to get it a little bit cooler. But yeah, look at them shrimp. Look at that. Does that not look delicious? Did you eat breakfast? Because if you didn't eat breakfast well, like me, um... I, should... I, I didn't eat breakfast. I'm hungry now. I know. 
like we've we we fixed our levels enough. Uh, let's show off one more thing. Uh, now we're just showing off the food because that's what we do. Vegetable stew. Who's here for veggie stew? Because I'm here for veggie stew. But yeah. <laughs> cool. But is Velvet going to get any dessert? I normally don't show off dessert. I think we spent all our coins at this point. I mean, I've still got silvers. <laughs> but yeah, we we don't need dessert. We're gonna just head on out to uh, what what is one of the longest chapters in the game. Honestly, uh, my PB run this is ten eighteen. The only chapter that's longer than that is uh, Vel is a uh, Mercedes chapter seven. But this is one of my favorite tracks in the game musically, is that song from that screen is the in-between song for uh, Nebulopolis chapter prologue or chapter epilogue. The epilogue areas all get different music from the main areas. Yep, and, and different from like what this area would have in someone else's else. chapter. Yep. Yeah. But yeah, this is a this part is a two part thing. There's go get the key to the door that we just walked by so that we can actually go do things. And then uh, once we've got that key and unlock that door, then we uh, we fight an airship is part two. And that airship does have some nice things about it. Uh, it also has a giant flamethrower. And it's seats and it's seats seven. <laughs> so here's here's a dwarven berserker. The the easiest of the mini bosses. So we're just gonna use our uh, spiral drive to armor through things. I actually want that. I'm gonna drop the juggle to grab that, so I don't forget it. Ah, uh, but we miss out on the toxin potion. That's unfortunate. It's a one level one toxin potion. It's fine. Oh, okay. I thought it was gonna be a level four like the other potion. Any, any potions the enemies throw, they scale with the enemy, but they're but if you get them by knocking them out of their hands, they're always level one. Oh. That's so rude. You still do, you still can, like, when you knock it out of their hand. Like, you also get to interrupt them using the potion at all, which is nice. Yep. The screen starts flooding with flying dwarves near the end of this fight, which, if you're not doing this, can be really, really, really a nuisance. Go take it to the player. Alright. Now we're going to stop and we're going to do a little bit of alchemy here. So we're going to take this level 4 blaze potion. We're going to throw this hop and aristo at it and make it into a level 4 flame spirits. We're going to take this level 2 flame spirits. We're going to mix it with... Uh, I have nothing to mix this with. Oh, this is real bad. We're going to keep a level 2 flame spirits because I have nothing right now. I literally have like zero. Uh, this is actually kind of awful. We're going to take this. We're going to mix that with this and this. So we're going to make a level 4 overload. And we're going to stop mixing potions right now because I forgot one really important thing about this route, which is I don't do my alchemy until after airship, because airship will drop two level nine poach two level nine uh material. <laughs> yeah. Like you had the the weak fire spirits on airship actually if you want to. I will be I will absolutely be doing that and I have the backup fire spirits in case I don't get well if I do get the level nine then I'll just mix the level nine into it and it'll be like level seven, which is fine. But yeah we're gonna use the we're gonna use the overload and we're gonna use the uh, fire spirits on airship. We're gonna we're gonna try for fast airship. We're gonna try for sub for sub sixty airship because you know runs not gonna PB, but I get a little extra time, so let's try to do cool things at least with it. Yeah, fast airship. Uh, remember that flamethrower I was talking about? Yeah, it kind of requires like ignoring the fact that you're in it. Yeah, you're gonna take damage, and you've got to be like, you know, on second thought, I'm just gonna ignore the fact that I'm taking damage and not actually take damage. I guess. This seems very wise. Uh. 
the bomb. One neat thing about the bombs that those dwarves have is if you hit them, then they, you know, they become friendly objects. They will damage enemies. Uh, and that's also true about a lot of other projectiles in this game, that you can hit them back at the enemies. And that's going to be especially important on the airship, because it fires missiles at you, that you can hit. And yeah, hit back it's at a big part that we, that we bounce them back, because uh, on this airship, uh, we're going to use all of our health to absorb flamethrower shots. <laughs> so taking <laughs> missiles is very bad. <laughs> I have not yet gotten 13 Sentinels, and I need to do that. We're going to eat this real quick for... Here we go. Alright, we've got the redstone key. Um, so here's the airship. We're going to save that. I'm going to throw this here, though. Which is, of course, exactly at the wrong spot, I believe. Good job, me. Oh, no. It'll actually give me coverage from other things, which is actually super useful at this part. But after the first health bar goes down, you see the airship gets a shield and an enemy is spawned. Yep, so now we gotta fight this mini boss while we're kinda under attack from the airship. Yep. Mini boss is dead. Now you can see these. There's the missiles. Is that a fire spirit? That was a blaze. That was a blaze potion. Um, but oh, we're gonna check this. Right now, we're gonna go absolutely ham here. So, hold still for ham. Pop this whirlwind, which will spawn up here. Been saving that for the entire run. Yep. So, is this the final boss? This is not the final boss, but this is also kind of the final boss. This is this, of this round. <laughs> this is basically the final boss. <laughs> I have I have I have never taken more than 100 damage from the actual storyline final boss. But yeah, we're going to embarrass the airship here real quick. So that is fast the, airship. I didn't see the timer. I popped out of it too quickly. Oh, I didn't see it either. I'm sorry. I'm done. 55. 55? Oh yeah, that is faster. It's sub sub minutes what we're looking for. No, it's 1 minute 1 minute 10 seconds point 55. Oh, that's bad. Yeah. I did a lot oh, of work okay. to not have to do that. Um, cool. I guess I missing mean, that blaze potion on that first part kind of hurt us. Yeah, it kind of hurts. Uh, so we're going to throw the material, that level 9 material, into the fire spirits. Yep. And we need the red lock door. Um, and I'm just not very sharp right now, I think, is the problem. So we're but going yeah, we on to the final boss. We get two fights beforehand, but yeah. Yep. Just working our way up there. We do get a little bit of fire spirits for this particular fight, which is nice. We'll get a couple of Valkyries burned up a little bit. I don't think any of the leaders spawn yet, which is unfortunate. Also, we get to deal with the, uh, the yelling dwarves here as they die. <laughs> of note, um, of note, I play on Japanese for the voice acting. Um, it is literally no different from playing on English because you no you do no voice cut scenes at all if you can help it. But you know, playing this game, no cutscenes would be interesting. I've considered it for like really really longathon, but it's like it's a lot. There's like one route is like five hours. <laughs> it feels so long. It's not that long, but it feels so long. I mean, when you're clearing through the fights this quickly, then yeah, it's uh... Like, yeah, like, actual cutscenes feel like they take forever. They're great cutscenes, but the storyline of this game is fantastic, because it's... Um, I mean, people are talking about 13 Sentinels and how, you know... Vanilla's where has been doing, like, interlocked storylines as a big part of what they do for all of their games, basically. So... An hour of gameplay and a few hours of cutscenes. It feels uh, that way. It's probably, it's probably about another like half. I'd have to time it, but yeah. Oh, I was final boss. Say, I was just gonna say we're two days early for that. Yeah. So, by the way, time is on the last hit on this boss, but we're gonna. I don't have a lot of supplies here. 
I got very unlucky through big parts of this run, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna... Spiral drive through this boss a lot. Yep, and we're gonna try not to stand on the ground too much, it's on fire. Oh, we're never gonna... If, if I do it right, we, like, touch the ground at specific times for timing purposes, basically. Like grabbing that blaze potion? <laughs> nope. Really? Wow. Not worth it. See, one of the things about this is uh, there's three heads. You can hit any of the heads. You can even hit multiple heads at the same time. The boss will take damage for each of those hits on each of those heads. So even though he has a ton of health, we just kind of blaze right through it, literally. Well, we fire spirits right through it. I mean, that too, but you do have a blaze potion that's still down Fine. there. Fine. Yeah, that fight really spiraled out of control. like 10401 I think we might Yeah, have my, my timer's at 10404. So it should be about 103. Maybe yeah, it'll be a 10 it'll be a uh, mid 103 because there's not a lot of cutscene time in this route. Yay, a PB. A I, I literally PB'd one segment of this entire run. Yay, a PB. <laughs> <feels like. laughs> so but yeah. Chat, so chat wants to point out what are you doing, Demi? We don't kill the three-headed puppy. We pet the three-headed puppy. I did that already. I did that on Monday. It's it's a new day. 103.24. Oh, what a rough run. Yep. And then we get to pet the cat. Yeah, I'm just going to say, you know what makes it better? Petting the cat. I forget what my, my PB is for that route. It's like 57. It's like 57.30. It's real. It's real fast. It's 57.32 in game time. Uh, What's your PB like, on like, pet the cat percent? For me to do that, though, it requires that I sit and I practice. Um, three. Okay, let's do it. All right. Man, so this is my last run of the marathon. I'll I'll be around for other things. I'm sure I'll be hosting. I'm hosting a bunch. I'm restreaming the finale. I'll be around a lot. I'm obviously, as part of the Valkyries. Um, you know, you'll definitely see me around. Um, thank you, Natara, for restreaming. Thank you, Sil, for coming out and commentating and embarrassing me live on stream. Love you. Love you, too. <laughs> Thank you so, so much to Rhea, who uh, was oh. very generous with her time to fill in for this last-minute hosting shift. So thank you, thank you for that. Yeah, Rhea's really awesome, too. I know she's got she's got Star Ocean 2, one of my favorite RPGs of all time, coming up later in this marathon. Yeah. Uh, which is a thing you should come into, where we we will turn, we will, we will turn pears into peaches and rocks into the greatest sword in the universe. But is there a kitty? Yeah. That and uh, I got paper clips here in about five hours, so yeah, that'll be, that'll be an experience. Uh, I, I don't paper know, I don't clips think is, is uh, certainly I interesting. I don't know if you know. I I think this is maybe the first time it will ever be in a marathon. That I, to my knowledge, I've never seen it in a marathon before. I have absolutely no idea how this will go over, but uh, hopefully it will. Well, we'll be doing math live on Twitch. I'm I'm not sure. If <laughs> I'm I, I, I'm afraid. I'm afraid for everything. That's the spirit. Okay, friends, we're gonna go and get ready for the next run, which is gonna be Magic Boy, run by Garby the Glitcherous. So, uh, see everybody soon. Bye, everyone. I'm gonna be taking off as well. Uh, head us over to our next host. Uh, and I think we're about to switch uh, and transition into the next game, which I believe is Magic Boy. So, so long everyone. See you back in about five hours.